unexpected and predictable. What do you think about this stuff? Uh, the Kaja, like, I get Wan Wan, but the Kaja especially. Yeah, the Kaja is interesting. I get that it would be very effective at separating the Hylos and basically rendering in him ineffective. But when you have Suyo and Natan, I don't think you have to worry too much about your Hylos getting lassoed away. So SRG is worried about their team composition being split up. Mm, even more so, I think at this point, whoever picks their EXP laner is going to be on a losing matchup. Because I be I feel like if SRG pick up Fovius now, there's not a lot of dashes to really get max value from Red Esports. But at the same time, if you pick Khalid and then you have to play into the Fovius, that's also pretty awful. Is there a mage that specifically finds Kaja a big annoyance? Lilia? I really, I mean, I, we, we haven't seen a Lilia in a long time. Mm, highly doubtful. I think it's probably because they were intending on bringing out this Cho. Mm. Because both Cho and Hylos would be vulnerable to Kaja if you split them apart when they're already quite in front of the team, then it becomes difficult. Because SRG faced that issue yesterday where their frontline was constantly being cut off from their backline. They couldn't take fights together. Here's another CC as well. He's starting to become the flavor of uh, MPL Malaysia as well, which is pretty interesting, right? Uh, Chose and I were just talking about the CC, how it can bring value in terms of his planks, and suddenly, like, you know, it can shred through the likes of a high loss. That's absolutely crazy coming Ooh. up from Red. All right. Now, Jace, I'm going to need you to break down these compositions for us before we head into the land of Dawn. You talked about CC. It's into the high loss. It looks like a winning matchup for Red. Yeah, it feels like it, right? Red is bringing in everything. Feels like they're reading SRG as an open book. Especially when you're so far ahead, everybody looking at you, you have to be careful. But SRG, trust in them, they can make it work. Alright, so I'm leaning in towards SRG because of that statement alone, but it's time to get the red battle going here. Only one of these teams is going to be walking away with their brandish colors at M6 as we head straight into the land of dawn. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. It's going to be our second match of the day. The Reds are on the table, but only one shall leave alive. Oh, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this. I want to see SRG really turn it around. Welcome it was a huge disappointment the other day when they got knocked down to the lower bracket. Not because they, uh, not because it's like, oh, their draft was weak. They just played really poorly. So hopefully this is going to be a competitive series. Yeah, there needs to be some adjustment because SRG was playing kind of similarly to the, what they used to do and it just doesn't work anymore these days. Well, work is one thing. I do feel like they have more in the tank. I'm just not sure whether they've hit a plateau or, well, what I thought in the regular season, they only played one comp because that's what they're most comfortable with. Now, up on the top side, however, we do see that Iris did force out Cram to use his Revitalize, which is already a very good start. Looking at the battle spells as well, even out opting to take Master Assassin up against Innocent, it's going to be a tough lane for him. Yeah, when you pick up the Aerotel against the Natan, you are intending to win out that gold lane. And with the CC, basically having a good matchup against the Hylos as well, Red Esports will have priority over the side lanes, which will allow them to play a little bit more aggressively early on, especially with the Loyi and Alpha. Red Giants, they just want to slow down and prevent invades and aggressive ganks. At this point in time, the main thing that I really want to take a look at is the fact that Red Esports, they, how much of a movement do they want to get around with, right? They do have a pretty nice priority in middle lane that is, uh, I think, pretty uh, rivals the SRG pretty nicely, but with the fact that they might very much lose objectives because of the fact that the Suyo on the opposite side, what could be their insurance policy? Mm, I think it really just boils down to Innocent at this point, right? He's got to have a decent laning phase. Oh, he's going to die here. Yep, there's the purify for the extra movement speed. I don't expect Innocent to die this early on, but neither are we seeing support to his side of the map. And right off the start, we do have Sensui just going to be opening things up onto Cram with a spear of the Alpha, but that doesn't seem like that's going to be the over just yet. Sakai so did get caught for a little bit, but Yum joins into the battle and pushes I Iris back a bit. Mm. Ooh, in the meantime, we see the 1v1 win. Innocent got dived under the tower. Owl with a huge lead in the gold lane now. And this is what we're talking about, the early aggression from Red Esports. Speaking of early aggression, a quick TP from Kim to make sure that they don't lose tempo. And most importantly, Grace isn't level 4 just yet. I think they're going to drag this out a little bit longer here because so far Sensui has done a good job at keeping up the level against the guys. And that's what you want in this Alpha Risuyo matchup. Oh, oh, that's not great from you. 
Not great at all. Unfortunately, well, that just happened. But at least for the start of Raid Esports, they do have about three person that's just going to be uh, huddling around the turtle. But it does seem as though Ukran just going to be trying to push Kranz away, immediately popping down onto the Glorious Pathway to get himself a quick exit. Such an expensive turtle. Glorious Pathway and two battle spells just to make sure that Sakai's has the space. I don't want to say things are going badly for SRG because it's not yet, but it feels like we're on the precipice of things turning around. A little bit. Yume's making a mistake like that, like flickering into the wall, is very uncharacteristic. We've never seen that from him. So Red Giants are definitely a little rattled mentally. I have to feel like their loss previously has affected them a little bit. They got the turtle. That's fine. They still got to do better, though. Grace just going to be getting himself a good amount of crowd control on to Yume, but Yume's just going to be fighting right back. Kicks him right into the face of Sakai's. As such, that is going to be yet another point over to the side of the SRG. Now that's the SRG I want to see here, right? You can tell Stormy knew that he had his passive, so he didn't mind taking aggression. And Sakai's was just charging up that blade surge, knowing that Yume's was going to make that kick happen. All things considered, I feel like Red Esports could have avoided prioritizing Stormy and maybe tried to punish Yumes a little bit more. But right now, the game state is still pretty even. As long as SRG can keep this up, get a pick off here and there, play a bit more defensive, not allow Red Esports to take advantage of diversion, they should be able to scale up just fine into the mid game. Although I am interested though, like a lot of teams, especially in MPLBH, there is a priority over Edith, whether it be support or flex into the EXP lane, but we don't see it as as often. Only Red Esports being one of the few who are willing to flex it out. And honestly, the first time I'm seeing Grace actually pick it up. Honestly, I have the same question. I was thinking the entire time throughout the early days of the playoffs, mm. where is Edith? This is a top tier pick. There is no reason it should be just ignored in the pick and ban every single match. Well, speaking of uh, getting ignored here, it looks like on the bottom side of the map, early invades coming in from Sensui as we see that Sakaisa is trying to influence the lanes to try and unlock Cram. Is that a diversion? No, looks like they didn't go for it. Just use a scouting so that they can control the turtle area a little bit better. Red Esports has the slight net worth lead, and they have no more players around for now. With the glorious pathway puffing themselves right into the side of him, but it doesn't seem like things are going to be working all that great as well. But unfortunately, with the frigid glacier, it connects down on the sensory, and that is going to be one jungler from the side of Red Esports taken down. SRG gains priority over the turtle, but it doesn't seem like Red Esports would want to give this up yet. Wait, Irithel is making a rotation from the bottom side to the mid lane. Mm -hmm. And such, Yooms takes a quick flicker mm -hmm. only to be wasted as the arrow still managed to get hit the target. Okay, so they still find the trade at the very end there. I think that right now, Grace is, he, he is being very aware of what Yooms is trying to do. He had a very good cancel, unable to find the trade straight away, but now the dive on top side. Uh, and Iris, he still wants to be uh, on a hyper aggressive. Sakai joins in, but didn't really quite land the stun down on the Iris with the Purify. The rest of the members from the side of Red East Spot jumps in, but Pepsolango Red Giants, they're safe right underneath their turret. Mm, Mustafa, you think that was like overly forced? Because this is starting to look bad! Stormy, why are you still here? No reason to stay. They already successfully escaped. And you are right, Gideon. That was actually a lot of resources from Red. For SRG, if they didn't lose Stormy there, that was actually a win. Mm. Bit of a bummer, but it doesn't mean that they can't recover. Looking at the items, War Axe already complete with no T2 boots. However, seeing Innocent, he's giving a lot of respect over to this Aerithel. A thousand gold ahead of him. Owl has got him beat in lane. And we know how scary Owl can be when he gets the items. He is the win condition for Red Esports. Innocent has played a similar role for SRG for a very, very long time, but we've already seen what happened this playoff with SRG when they are behind. I'm expecting Sakai to have a pretty decent burst in the early stages and wanting to play around the chills of Way of the Dragon, but so far we haven't seen very decisive play tasks yet. But as here we have, Sensui down in the bottom lane with a quick little proxy that allows them to zone SRG and take T1. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they're getting like a little cocky here. They're kind of a lot. Oh! oh! Sakai's caught with his pants down. When it comes down to diversion, immediately popping the opponents out. Beautifully played. That is information being provided in the mid lane. They saw Sky's instant TP into the bush, picks him off. Red Esports, their rotation and coordination. We can see why they put up such a strong fight this playoffs. And 
SRG, they're facing similar issues. Mm -hmm, but 2.6k goal lead doesn't mean that they can't turn it around. I think Red, they just need to maintain this lead so far. With the help of Iris, it's been looking good. They've broken both T1s on top and bottom side. All they need is to unlock mid, and I think that Red Esports, they're going to snowball this out of control. Yeah, I am of the same feeling here. We can see already confident enough to start invading the purple buff too. Glorious pathway popped right up. Sensui immediately jumped backwards with the Spear of Alpha. Well, Yum's HP doesn't seem to be all that great does. Owl Ooh. just wants to jump right into the face of Yum's, but didn't really quite manage to connect the last hit. Well, Grace goes in of Shatter with a flicker, but he's going to be caught and taken down by the hands of Stormy. The rest of Red Esports want to take a run for it. Mm, they also got the Purify out of Iris, something to keep in note. Three battle spells down for the side of Red Esports, Stormy and Cram sacrifice sacrificing their own. Innocent about to get his own Purify back up. In terms of raw scaling, Owl is ahead of Innocent. And that's something that Salango Red Giants are keeping in mind. They want to make sure that the two main forces of Owl and Sensui are split up because they're a lot easier to manage when they're separated rather than together. Yeah, Red Esports seemed a little bit discoordinated in that previous fight. Grace especially going a little bit too far, flickering with the Earth Shatter between the towers, and the rest of his team just didn't know how to connect. Red Esports still has the lead, but if SRG can bait out more of those plays, they definitely can scale back up, because we know late game Natan is pretty scary. It is pretty scary, but looking at the damage ranking, both Iris and Kim are doing a phenomenal job in terms of pumping out damage. I mean, as much as they want to control one side, Oh, Diversion, could it be? It is. However, it does seem like the Glorious Powerful will slow them down a tad little bit, but Red Esports taking the second hit in the middle lane, at least they cleared out the wave. Stop out, walk me through this, because again, Cram did use the Glorious Pathway as soon as he saw that TP to ensure that Sakai's gets out. Is it a worthy trade? It's definitely worth it to keep Sakai's alive in that point, but I also feel like he could have gotten out without needing to use it. I don't think it's a big deal because it's unlikely a big fight will pop out before Glorious Pathway comes back out. And it's just a safety net because SRG already knows they've been punished for being overconfident this tournament. And the Spear Dragon connected down the cramps definitely will be shredding him down like a hot knife through butter. And this is getting pretty brutal here. Oh, the kick! And Widow Dragon connecting down. Doesn't seem like Grace will be able to get himself out of that. But that was just a collateral damage all the way through. As Yooms is going to be the one to take him down. Whoa. Sakai's hopes that he will be able to get his kill down on the Sensui. Leaving him at just a oh. slow. But Sakai turns it around. Gets himself a kill onto Owl. Just a little bit more before he will be able to turn things around. But Iris, he still managed to connect all the yo-yos right into his face. As Stormy takes the fall. When uh, do they call it quit stuff? Uh, it feels like, you know, you're handing the hot potato to one person or the other and each person keeps burning their palms. It was a good display of skill and good confidence from Skies, thinking that he would be able to do what was necessary to poke down Red Esports. But I think he underestimated just how tenacious Iris can be on a hero like this. He is going to chase you down forever. Oh, hold on. Whale Dragon connecting down on the Iris, but it does seem like he will not be able to get away as Innocent takes up that one kill. Innocent, though, it does seem like he's not going to be anywhere uh, at all with the quick little atrophy to get himself right out of pitch. Mm, Cram, it's the punching bag at this point, right? Every single time he has to open up that map because nobody else can successfully do so, and Yums' way of the Dragon is just way too valuable to lose. Yeah, Red Esports so far showing better positioning in terms of straight up team fights. SRG ideally wants to find pickoffs if they can. Because with a 3k lead, Red Esports is very comfortable going for this front to back positioning. Owl is basically not being threatened most of the time at all. SRG, they can definitely make it back into this, especially now that Innocent has his Holy Crystal, but they have to be careful about which fights they take and how long they take them. Looking at the in-game equipment, man, Iris is really far ahead, and I thought initially that Owl had a pretty good lead of his own, but it looks like it's kind of narrowed down a little bit. Well, Innocent fires really quickly. He is one of the best goal laners throughout the regular season so far. If you give him some time, give him some items, he will absolutely carry you with his micro mechanics. Slowly, Red Esports onwards did not connect onto anyone at all, but Red Esports, the main thing that they want is all of these inner turrets taken down. It is definitely going to be a bonus if it's an inhibitor turret, but with the fact that a lot is ready to be taken down, I think that that's kind of far ask. Mm, it kind of feels like Red Esports right now are pretty fired up, right? They're not scared. You can definitely see the confidence as they make these plays is all. 
Oh, Glorious pathway plus the roam, but it doesn't seem like that's going to work too well. Yooms gets a kick on the Grace, but it is going to be split into two fights. As such, Yooms has got no follow-up, and such is going to be taken down by both Owl as well as Kim. But it does seem like that version from Yo! will connect down onto the bottom side, but it's not quite enough to actually do anything realistic. Whoa, look at the damage from Owl as well. Ready Sports. As you mentioned, Gideon, they're feeling it. They're confident and they're systematic. I don't think they're too worried about SRG because they have practiced this. There's some mental preparation here where they know as long as they do their thing, they come out on top. Oh, will catch us too. And it doesn't seem like things are just going to be working too great for them as Grace is going to be taken down. Sensor is going to be nicked on the chopping block. Iris went too far. As such, that is going to be an easy triple for Selangor at the cost of the inhibitor turret. Ooh, all right. At least Innocent is still here to play the video game. Right now, I think that's all they can kind of hope for. Yooms, unfortunately, yes, he is a distraction, but isn't finding as much impact in comparison to Sakai's or even Stormy's at this point. But even so, Slanger Red Giants, if they drag this out, they will be able to at least go toe-to-toe -to -toe against Red Esports in the late game. Of Innocent, win condition for SRG as always. He's definitely getting up there. Ready Sports still with a slight gold advantage, but it has been narrowed down a good amount. Ready Sports, while they're pretty good at team fighting, they gotta jump on top of Innocent. And if SRG can continue to use their utilities to make sure that this Natan is not threatened, his DPS is more than enough to keep them in this game. Well, let's not forget about Sensui here, because again, because of how much of a goal lead he has over Sakai, he doesn't mind looking for counter engages when he has Winter Crown active. Dooms, as well as Cram, tries to open things up as much as possible just to find where Raid Esports is. Uh -huh. But it is definitely a pandemonium in the front line. But Sekai still manages to connect down under the Lord, takes one for him. The Pride of Ice pops from the side of Stormy, but still completely obliterated from the side of Owl. Raid Esports now have got Slango Red Giants running back home. Does it? I don't know about you, Stafa, but it feels like Slango Red Giants, they are kind of tunnel visioning on these fights. I agree with you. It doesn't re oh, 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 the burst! Is he alive? Yep. Oh my goodness, that does not feel good for SRG. You can see the damage that's coming just from the seed potential of Owl. They got that Lord, but Red Esports is controlling these fights much better. They're splitting up SRG when their opponents need to be sticking together so that they can protect this Natan. Honestly, when it comes down to the pre-Lord fight, we can clearly see that Yooms as well as Kranz really went out of the way to open things up, but when they really try to get something connected down or trying to set up something, the rest of Selenium Red Giants is just kind of too far back. Yeah, honestly, I think that ready. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh wait, what was Yubes? that? Yooms! The flicker, not the way to start things off! As such, he's gonna burn the immortality. At least when it comes down to Shupo, he'll still be able to get away. The rest of Red Esports, they would really want to keep up chase. But we do have the diversion from Static Cap. It connects down on the Yooms and Graham! Stormy from the side, hoping that the Frigid Glacier will be able to turn the tides around. As such, it allows the guys to at least pick one off of the Owl. As such, Ooh. this might be what they want to do, and they will want to run it down in the middle lane, taking him down. Alright, that's what SRG is looking for. Although it looked bad to start with, Red Esports started getting a little overconfident there. The diversion to try and cut them off. Beautiful disengages, beautiful movement from SRG to position themselves to punish the overextension. And now they finally hold a gold lead. I don't know, it feels like SRG to a certain degree... I they're getting pushed into a corner and Red Esports is just preying on them, right? You see these failed engages. I don't think that it's intentional from SRG side. They are admittedly big blunders coming on on Yum's part. And Red Esports, yes, they are pressing the advantage, but I think they need to start thinking about what is profit and what is considered loss. Finding two picks off of SRG is great. Three is should be the bare minimum, but afterwards, just let it be unless you have an endgame scenario. Uh, but it's... Clear that SRG is still going a little bit on their old habits. They were very good at running down the opponent and forcing mistakes out that would allow them to turn a small blunder into a huge downfall for their enemy. And while it has worked here and there, a small mistake means that it could all be turned around on them instead. The adaptation is going to be very important in the next few minutes. And now that the gold is pretty much even, and positioning and key targeting is going to be crucial. Mm -hmm. Innocent also has to make sure that he finds that isolated 1v1 against Owl specifically, right? He can't deal with true damage from Sensui, but he has a Winds of Nature to guarantee a victory in that fight. So if he can burst them down, that would be ideal, but how do you set it up? 
Mm, it's hard to say. Humes, unfortunately. I don't know what's going on with him. He's been making mistakes left and right on a hero that should be one of his comforts. And Grace is punishing him every single time. Maybe allowing Cram to start things off might work out a little better. The Lord coming down to half HP. Jooms wants to look for something, but he did manage to connect down onto Grace. But it does seem like the immortality is just going to be popped. And Sakai's take the Lord down. Sakai's continues onwards, and that is going to be a good amount of members for the side of Red Esports taken down. Sensui's next one onto the guillotine. Oh, oh my oh. leg! Innocent catches up, but he pops his own immortality. I will look at the fraction of HP immo Im immortality immediately bought. So even if Sakai's didn't manage to catch up with the Cyclone's eye, doesn't seem like they will be able to follow it up. No. Bounce up in the pixel burst. Oh, no. nice. He managed to find the arrow and lands right down on the owl. Oh. That's gonna be great as Senegal Ray Giant marches through mid. They found the opening after 18 minutes. SRG will turn around the early game lead and claim victory in game number one. They got so lucky at the very end. They're so very, very lucky. Oh my goodness, it's tough to say that SRG won that convincingly, but Red Esports, they really know.